Hello and welcome to our latest Fellside service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments and all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And so let's just take a moment and in the silence bring to mind those things we need to confess. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The old hymn of praise, the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I collect prayer. For the presentation of Christ in the temple. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple, in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our Bible reading for this service. And I'm just going to use one reading, which is the Old Testament from Malachi chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5. I'm not going to read the gospel reading that's set uh, because in the message that I want to say after this reading, I'm just concentrating on one verse from this passage in Malachi. So Malachi 3 and verses 1 to 5. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand 
when he appears. For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soul. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the iron workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Malachi is one of the Old Testament books, which is known as the Minor Prophets. And the message of Malachi is to encourage people to mend their ways, to turn back to God. But I want to concentrate on one verse from that reading, which is verse 3. He will say it as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. And this verse is very relevant to us. And I'll explain that by sharing a story that I came across. And this story concerns a group of ladies who attended a Bible study group on a regular basis. And they were actually going through the book of Malachi. And they were struck by those words, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. So one of the groups said that she would visit a silversmith and report back about the subject. So she arranged a visit, and without giving the reason for the visit, she asked the silversmith to tell her about the process of refining silver. He fully described the process to her. And then she asked, do you sit while the work of refining is going on? Oh yes, he replied. I must sit with my eyes fixed steadily on the surface. For at the time necessary for refining be exceeded in the slightest degree, the silver will be injured. And the lady at once saw the beauty and the comfort too of the expression, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. The eyes of the Lord is steadily intent on the work of purifying, and his wisdom and his love are both engaged in the best manner for us. He will be with us through whatever life throws at us, he will even use some of those things to purify us. And before leaving, the lady asks one final question for the silversmith. When do you know the process is complete? That is simple, came the reply. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is simple, came the reply. When I can see my own image in the silver, the refining process is finished. And that is the key to understanding this verse. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will refine them like gold and silver. And then the Lord will have people who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the process of being a Christian is called salvation. Jesus has done it all. But God the Father wants us to change to become more like Jesus, what we call sanctification. And he wants us to be purified from the dross that stops us being the people we could be. He wants us to become 
more Christ-like in our lives, in all our areas, our words, our actions. He will touch those areas of our lives that need refining, that need reforming. And it's up to us with regard to how we will respond. And as you give up those things that displeases God, they will become your offerings in righteousness. Another story, and this is about Richard Wormbrand from his book, In God's Underground. And Richard was a minister in Romania during the communist rule. And he was put in prison for his faith by the communist authorities, two and a half years of which were in solitary confinement. And one day, a, a keen young communist man was thrown into Richard's cell because he had, he had said something with which the state disagreed. And when Richard explained that he was a minister, the young man tells him that he wants nothing to do with Christianity citing Marx's comment that religion is the opiate of the people. So Richard didn't try to witness to him by words. And as the rations in prison were very, very small, he used to share his bread with this young man. And slowly, over time, they became friends. And one day the man says to Richard, tell me, who is Jesus like? And Richard replies, Jesus is like me. To which the man replied, then I would like to get to know him. What a story. Would I dare to say that? Jesus is like me. And if I did say, I very much doubt anyone would want to know Jesus when they look at me. But I can hope that the longer I'm a follower of Jesus, the closer, hopefully, I will become more Christ-like. And as Jesus prayed, your will, not mine, be done. And how about you? Does your life reflect Jesus? You'd probably say that you're a work in progress. And how would people react if you said that Jesus is like me? And God can and will use all kinds of things to get our attention, to get our attention and to call us to repentance. And there's a short story by Albert Camus, and it's called The Fall. And the main character is a man called John Baptiste, who was a lawyer in Paris, a self-described defender of noble causes, widows and orphans, as the saying goes. One evening he's out walking and he hears a laugh behind him and he turns around. There's no one there. And for John Baptiste, it was the laughter of judgment. For him, it was the laughter of judgment. And self-awareness began to dawn for him. He saw that what he really wanted was not to help others, but to strut the stage in front of others. He saw in the echo of the laugh that he was a hypocrite, a lousy actor, a fake, a fraud. He says this in the story. Shortly after the laughter, I discovered something. When I would leave a blind man on the pavement to which I had taken him, I used to tip my hat to him. Obviously, that wasn't intended for him. He couldn't see it. To whom was it addressed? To the public. After playing my part, I would take the bow. The haunting laugh led him to self-examination. He concluded, I was always bursting with vanity. 
I, 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 is the refrain of my whole life, which could be heard in everything I said. Will it be a haunting laugh that will be God's messenger to you? Will it be a haunting laugh that will be God's messenger to me? Amen. And let's just take a moment for reflection. And so let's turn to our prayers. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. And those who follow you will have the light of life. Hear us as we pray now for the church and the world, saying, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Dispel the darkness, we pray. Lord Jesus, the world is full of people who live in the darkness of despair and misery. And we remember the frail, the elderly, the refugees who were displaced by war and those living in the midst of violence, those in fear for their lives. And Lord, we ask that you would bless all who minister to them in your name and who seek to relieve their suffering. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Dispel the darkness, we pray. And Lord Jesus, there is darkness in high places. Perhaps where governments have been corrupted by power. And we do pray for those in positions of authority and influence. Those who may be tempted to put ambition or greed above their integrity and responsibility. May your light guide them in the paths of truth and righteousness. Lord, the light of your love is shining Dispel the darkness, we pray. Lord Jesus, there is darkness in many homes and communities where people are in conflict and the vulnerable are exploited or left to fend for themselves. We pray for those families divided by relationships breaking down, children, who are neglected or manipulated. Those lives that are damaged by abuse. Those neighborhoods that are in fear of crime and violence. May your light bring them warmth and reassurance in their distress. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Dispel the darkness, we pray. And Lord Jesus, some of our friends and loved ones are overshadowed by the darkness of sickness or bereavement. So we lift them to you now. And in a moment of silence, just lift any on your hearts and minds to the Lord. Lord, may your light bring them comfort in their suffering. Grant them the hope of salvation. Guide all who minister to their needs. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Dispel the darkness, we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And so we come now to our final prayer of blessing. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And so, as always, until the next time, bye for now.